Hey there, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I just want to take 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video in case someone has stumbled across this video randomly and doesn't realize what the context is. This is a playlist of videos teaching you how to build a FPV, first person view freestyle or racing drone from start to finish. If you've stumbled in in the middle, Go down to the video description, there's a playlist link, start at the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. If you are working your way through this video, I want to remind you that there is a Discord server, a Discord chat server uh, for Quad Camp Online. There's a channel over there where we provide support uh, for the people who are working through this project. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the YouTube comments, absolutely, but if you need a little bit more real-time help, you maybe will get better luck over in the Discord server. Link in the video description. I also want to remind you, thanks to Rotor Riot for helping make this project a reality. And if you are thinking of working your way through this project, you can get all of the equipment for, to build the quadcopter in just one credit card swipe from the Rotor Riot store. Yeah, you can buy the stuff elsewhere as well. One piece here, one piece there. Pay too much for shipping. Accidentally buy the wrong thing. You get it all. And there's a link to that down in the video description. On with the video. Now we come to the part of the setup where you're gonna start working with Betaflight. And in order to do that, you gotta download the Betaflight configurator and there are some drivers that you need to install. I made a super detailed video showing how to do this. Here is that video. It's titled Betaflight 3.4 and 3.5 setup for total beginners. I went through every single step and rather than just reproduce that here i'm going to refer you to that video so if you have never installed betaflight on your computer before if you have never installed the drivers and connected to and flashed a flight controller you need to go watch this video link in the video description get that working and then come on back here and we'll proceed hey folks it's joshua from the future here i just want to be clear go to that video download betaflight configurator install it download the drivers, install them. That video shows you how to do that. But then that video goes on to show you a whole bunch of stuff. Don't watch the whole video. Just do the part where you install the configurator and install the drivers. All right, now you're back. And when you plug in your flight controller to USB, on Windows at least, you should see COM, well, in my case, it's COM13 appear. It'll go from manual selection to COM13. On macOS and Linux, it changes to something like slash dev slash TTY slash something. But basically, when you plug in, you want to see this change. And that means that everything is working. You can then hit connect. And you should see this screen, which means you're connected to your flight controller. Congratulations. So having proved that that works, I'm actually now going to disconnect because the first thing I need to do is flash the latest version of Betaflight onto the flight controller. It doesn't come with the very, very latest. And as long as we're going through these steps, we may as well. I'm going to choose this pull down and I'm going to scroll to find the Kakute F7 firmware. That's the correct firmware for our flight controller. And I'm going to choose the firmware version. And at the time of this release, 351 is the latest. And I'm going to choose 351. And I'm going to hit load firmware online. And then I'm going to hit flash firmware. And you'll notice when I hit flash firmware, the word DFU appeared up here in the upper right. If that did not happen, then here's what you need to do. Now, in my case, it happened and you can see the flashing is working. Here's what you do if that did not happen. If it said could not contact bootloader, for example. If you didn't see DFU in the upper right, the tool that you need to use is the Impulse RC Driver Fixer. Why, why do you need to fix your drivers if you just installed them? No, don't, don't worry about it. Sometimes you need to do that. Uh, so if that didn't work, you're going to go to this URL, impulserc.com slash pages slash downloads. Download the Impulse RC Driver Fixer. It'll download your virus scanner may complain because it's just an EXE file and it may not like that. So do whatever you got to do to get this downloaded and run this app. And when this app runs, what you're going to need to do is plug in your flight controller while holding down the bootloader button on the flight controller. The bootloader button is this white button here on the back of your flight controller. And you're going to hold that down with your finger while you plug in the USB cable. While the Impulse RC driver fixer is running, I'm going to hold that down and plug in the flight controller. And you should see this. Installing DFU driver. Success. Drivers fixed. 
And having done that, now you should see that your board is in DFU mode and you can load and flash the firmware. Now at this point, you've loaded and flashed Betaflight 3.5.1, or you could go ahead with whatever if there's a newer version out, 4.0 is out or whatever, but we're gonna be working with 3.5.1 here. I'm gonna unplug USB, plug USB back in without holding down the bootloader button, and connect. So here you are in Betaflight Configurator and you are connected to your flight controller and we're ready to begin. The first thing I wanted you to just get out of the way while we're here is I want you to enable expert mode. Are you an expert? Maybe, maybe not, but go ahead and enable expert mode so that yours looks like mine. And you'll see when I do that, a few extra tabs appear here. You just wanna make sure if I click over to one of those tabs, you're not confused where that come from. And in fact, you can even click on these gears here and permanently enable expert mode. Oh yeah, just do it, do it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Here in the ports tab, you're gonna to need to make the following changes. On the UART1 line, go over to the peripherals column and set the peripheral to TBS Smart Audio. On the UART4 tab, go to the telemetry output column and set the telemetry output to Smart Port. Hey there folks, Joshua from the future here. Apologies for the confusion. Uh, you're only gonna set Smart Port telemetry if you are using a FreeSky receiver with telemetry like the RXSR. If you're using another type of receiver with another kind of telemetry, then you're gonna follow the instructions in the PDF that I had uh, Philip Seidel make for us uh, that showed all the wiring and setup for your receiver. And on the UART7 tab, go to the sensor input and set the sensor input to ESC. And then here for UART6, Serial RX should already be enabled by default, but if it isn't, you're gonna go ahead and enable it. After making those changes, you'll hit save and reboot. Now the first thing I like to do when I'm setting up a new quad is go to the receiver tab and make sure that my receiver is set up right and my transmitter is talking correctly to my flight controller. So you can see right here that uh, in my case, the channels are kind of wiggling and jiggling just a little bit. And as I move the sticks, the individual channels also move. Now there's a couple things we need to do here. And one is to make sure that our channel mapping is correct. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the throttle, which I'm using what's called a mode two transmitter. That means the throttle and yaw axis are on the left, the pitch and the roll axis are on the right. A few people out there in the world use mode one, mostly in Australia and New Zealand because they're weirdos over there. Sorry, Australia and New Zealand, you know it's true. Uh, they would have throttle on the right stick. And then there's modes three and four, which only real kooks use. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but most of you guys are going to be using a mode two transmitter. And what that means is that when I move the throttle here and I can see that the throttle is moving, I'm going to move the yaw axis here and I can see that the yaw channel is moving. I'm going to move the pitch axis, which is up and down on the right stick and see that pitch is moving and the roll axis. Yay. The roll axis is moving. That's fantastic. What do you do if that isn't true for you? The answer is that you need to rearrange A, E, T, and R right here in the channel map to make, sure, to make sure that roll, pitch, yaw, and the throttle, A, E, T, R, are assigned to the right channels. And you just shuffle them around. A is for roll because A stands for aileron, which on an airplane is the roll axis, but we have multi-rotors. So why are we talking about ailerons? Just go with it. E stands for elevator, which on an airplane is the pitch axis. So that makes sense. Uh, T is throttle. So thankfully that one is the same. And R stands for rudder, which on the airplane is the yaw axis. And it's pretty weird. Why don't, why don't we just do roll pitch yaw throttle? Well, we just don't, but we need to rearrange these. And for most setups, you can actually pick one of these defaults. Just pick the default and hit save and then move the sticks around. Oh, well, see, that's clearly not right. I'm moving the throttle and the pitch axis is moving. So that's not right. But if you need to, you can just you know, figure it out. So I'm moving the throttle and the pitch axis is what's moving. So I need to switch the pitch axis, which is the E elevator and the throttle. So instead of T-A-E-R, I'm gonna make it E-A-T-R and save. And now is throttle correct? Throttle is correct. Is pitch correct? 
no, pitch is roll. So I'm moving pitch and the roll axis is moving. So I need to switch pitch and roll. So pitch is E, roll is A. So I'm going to go from E A T R to A E T R. A E T R. Okay. And now throttle is correct. Pitch is correct. Roll is correct. And yaw is correct. Now the next thing you need, once you've got the channel map done correctly, the next thing you need to check is the channel direction. When the throttle stick is all the way down, the channel should be all the way low to the left. When the throttle stick is all the way up, the channel should be all the way high. When the, when the yaw axis is all the way to the left, the channel should go low. When the yaw axis is all the way to the right, the channel should go high. And pitch forward should go high, pitch back should go low roll left and roll right. If any of your channels don't move the same direction, that channel needs to be reversed. And you can do that in your transmitter, but since everybody has different transmitters, we're gonna, I'm gonna actually show you how to do it in Betaflight and that'll make sure it's consistent for everybody. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna need to get a piece of paper. I'll do this with Notepad since uh, I'm recording my screen. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a note and what I want to make a note of is I'm going to put the stick all the way down 987. So throttle goes from 987. I'm going to put it all the way up to 2011. And it does not need to be reversed. Yaw goes from 987 to 2011. Oh, well, I'm lucky. These are all going to be the same. 2011, 987. 987, 2011. So all of my channels go from 987 to 2011 and none need to be reversed. You're going to want to make a note, especially spectrum users. Usually the uh, roll axis and the, I think it's the roll and the yaw axis spectrum users usually need to be reversed from defaults. Um, so there we go. All my channels have the same endpoints of 987 and 2011 and no channels need to be reversed. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the command line by clicking CLI and we're going to type in the command RX range and RX range is used to configure the endpoints of the channels in Betaflight. And if we just hit RX range and hit enter, we can see the, the format of the command is RX range 0, 1, 2, and 3. And what that means is we're changing the, the endpoints of the first, second, third, and fourth channels, which is a little confusing because they start at zero and count zero, one, two, three. Why don't they start at one and count one, two, three, four? And that's because programmers like to start counting at zero because they're weirdos, but that's just how it is. So in my case, the endpoints are identical for all the channels. So what I need to type is RX range zero, 987, 2011. And then I can just press the up arrow on my keyboard to put that command back in and change it to read RX range 1, 987, 2011. If you have different out, different endpoints for your channels, if they're not completely consistent, then you might, you might need to put in different numbers for each one. RX range 1, 2, and 3. Oh. Now, if you had any channels that needed to be reversed, you're going to flip these numbers around. You would type RX range 3, 2011. 11, 987. And if you flip those numbers around, it'll reverse the channel. Then I'm going to type save and hit enter. And when I go to the receiver tab, I should see now that my channel, when my throttle's all the way down, is 1,000. When it's all the way up, is 2,000. And I should see that all the channels go from 1,000 to 2,000. Perfect. If you don't see that for any of your channels, you may need to go back and adjust the RX range. Uh, again, in my case, all the channels had the same endpoints, but if you put the wrong channel number in, um, so here, in my case, channel zero is gonna be the aileron or ro roll. Channel one is gonna be the elevator or pitch. Channel two is gonna be throttle, and channel three is gonna be roll. That's the order that you're adjusting them in, A-E-T-R. Whatever you see here, that's the order you're going to be adjusting them in. And if you need, if you accidentally assigned one of the wrong channels uh, with RX range, then that might be why they were not exactly right. Another thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to adjust your channel centers. So in this case, 
all of my sticks are centered. Now you don't need to adjust channel center for the throttle because the throttle is not spring loaded. But for the spring loaded channels, you wanna make sure that when the stick is centered, the channel is perfectly centered as well. And the channel needs to be perfectly centered at 1500. Now on the Tyrannus, the way to do this is to use the trim switches to center the channels and then convert those trims over to sub trims. You never actually wanna use trims uh, on a, on a multi-rotor except this one time temporarily. So what I'm gonna do is uh, looking at the roll channel, my value is 1501, and I'm gonna just bump a tiny bit of left trim. There we go, now it's kind of hovering at 1500. My pitch channel is a little low at 1497, so I'm gonna pitch forward. And one more click, oh, now it's at 1501. Just get it as close as you can. My yaw channel at 1498 needs to go up just slightly. And now they are all centered at 1500. The exact way that you do this is gonna vary depending on the type of transmitter you've got. I made another video once upon a time about setting up Spectrum and I think I also set up FlySky. I'm gonna put a link to that down in the video description. If you don't have a, an OpenTX radio, uh, I'll show you the OpenTX setting right here. After inputting the trims, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press menu and then page to get to the inputs screen. No, nope, my bad, output screen. I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom of this list. And I'm gonna do that by just going up once from the top of the list and it'll roll through. And at the very bottom, you see trims to sub trims. I'm gonna highlight trims to sub trims and press enter. And what happens is that the values that were in my trims that were centering the channels got copied to what's called a sub trim and then the trims are zeroed out. You always want the trims zeroed out normally when you're flying a multi-rotor. So now my channels are centered at 1500. They are mapped correctly. And that is probably a good place to stop this video. If any of that didn't work for you, and there was a lot to do in this video, and there's so many different permutations depending on what transmitter you've got. If any of that didn't work for you, I want to really encourage you to head on over to the Quad Camp online Discord server and ask for help. And I will do my best to help you there or somebody else will help you there. And hopefully we'll get it sorted out.